Sometimes in life you come across people who just aren't wired the same as you. People who see potential in cars that most would send to the scrap heap. People who modify cars to such an extent that you'd easily walk past it without a second glance in the street. People who know their creations inside out. True enthusiasts. True builders. Truly mad. Alex has built a machine with scary performance and today on the channel we show you this real Wolford Chiefs clothing. Hi, I'm Alex, I'm 22, and this is my Mercedes 190 Sleeper. So I've had this car for two years now. When I bought it, it was completely standard by the wheels. They had a two litre auto in it, uh, which the bottom end had gone. So the first thing to decide was, do I keep it original or do I engine swap it? And inevitably, here we are with the engine swaps. So the first job we did on the car was essentially pull the engine and box out. The reason we went for this four cylinder, cheap, quite powerful, is standard, and it's a bit different from the usual six cylinder that everyone uses. This standard makes 190 horsepower out of a SLK 230 compressor, which is supercharged. We put that in, made 190 horsepower. It sounded like a helicopter because of the supercharger, but we quickly got quickly got bored of that. So that was where obviously the, the turbo came in. The reason for the turbo is uh, the standard supercharger, as me and a few people start to call it, is the space heater. Uh, so we were seeing intake temps of around 100 degrees C, which if you know boosted, that is hot. So we were struggling with that. Um, I mean, I could have got meth injection, but it's just another thing to add. So what we decided is get rid of that and just go for the easier option, which we thought at the time, and put a turbo on it. This is a whole set HE351W. It's got a custom, like a, a rare exhaust housing, which has got a larger internal 28 mil wastegate. We're running a Mamba actuator, five PSI base pressure spring. Controlling that is a Mac three port valve. Initially, we ran it on gate pressure and made 290 brake around that. And now we're running 18 PSI, making 350 horsepower at 500 newton meters of torque. We did make a bit more and it's got way more in the turbo, but my clutch setup couldn't handle it. So we just backed off a little bit from there. You can chase power with the supercharger, a lot of people have, but it's a lot of money, it's sort of like an NA build, you put a lot of money in and only a small increase. Whereas basically I've made a manifold, adapted the pipe work, bolted the turbo on and 350 brakes, so. So in terms of what I've done and what other people have done on this car for me, um, there's not a lot other people have done really. I've done everything myself as, as far as I can, bar sort of like the engine mapping itself. Credit goes to hybrid tuning, really helped me out there. I'm a big pain in the ass to them, to be honest. Uh, but no, we've done absolutely everything from the welding on the intake pipes to gearbox mounts to rear subframe uh, refurbishments, turbo manifolds just literally everything that you can think of. Yeah, I, I, I prefer to do it all myself, you know. Um, I'm an engineer by trade, so I, I don't really get a satisfaction from paying someone else to do something that I could potentially do. And you know, when the inevitable happens and it breaks down on the side of the road, <laughs> I know where to fix. Actually driving the car is similar to a skateboard uh, <laughs> in terms of how low and how long it feels and what it's like in corners and stuff. I mean, it's not a race car. It's a, it's a cruiser from the 80s, you know. It is, it is fast, it does pull well, you know, it's a six speed box, it's, it's got the cruise there, but when you want to overtake people, that will go. So I picked up the car by accident, really. Um, I saw it on eBay, as you do most things these days. It caught my eye. I thought, you know what, I'll stick a bid on it without even thinking. I kept my eye on it for a little while, didn't think I was going to get anywhere. Um, five minutes before the end, you know, I'm highest bidder and I thought, oh, hang on a sec, I might actually want this. So I kept my eye on it, kept my eye on it. Someone outbid me and then I bid them out obviously again. Uh, and then by the end of it, I'd won it. So paid 400 pounds for the car, paid the guy 50 quid to drop it off to me. And pretty much as it sat was how it came on the low loader. One thing that does upset me quite a lot when I think about it is that my rear diff is now worth more than I paid for the car. Um, so we've got a, a 190E Cosworth ASD on the back which is essentially an LSD, which can be hydraulically locked out. So all you skiddy boys out there. In terms of actually swapping this engine into this chassis, as it were, it's relatively simple. There's a couple of routes you can go. You can use the standard 190E five-speed box, which would have to use a certain flywheel, that sort of thing to match up. But what I've done is use a six-speed from this engine out of the same car it came from. All that is required to actually bolt the whole assembly in, gearbox and engine, 
you need some E220 engine arms. The standard 190 mounts themselves are fine to use. Then you just need a custom rear gearbox mount where it goes onto the shell underneath. You'll need a custom prop shaft, a shortened and a different flange for it to bolt straight onto the standard diff. And essentially it is in the hole. You'll need a custom shorter gear linkage for it to actually line up inside the shell. Boost pipes will obviously need to be modified, intercooler mounts, uh, radiator will need to be changed. There's two ways you can do the ECU. I've gone for a Haltech standalone uh, with the custom wiring loom, or you can hit up Modified Merc UK to get Louis to make you a nice M111 2.3 custom wiring loom, which will plug straight in. So the car, the car itself, it was always designed to be a sleeper but a cruiser that could always go fast. You know, I didn't want people looking at it and going, oh my God, that's a race car, that sort of thing. I wanted people looking at it and go, has he just put a loud exhaust on that or is there actually something done to it? So in terms of exterior mods, all that's actually really been done is the monoblock wheels that have been refurbed and this facelift bumper. Uh, you wouldn't really notice facelift unless you were a nerd like me. So that's pretty much it on the outside. In the future, I think we will go for more power, but at the moment, we're finding the power is dying off in high RPMs. Uh, what we believe that to be is the flow characteristics of the head, so the porting isn't quite up to spec, uh, and the cams are specifically designed for low-end power, like the supercharger. So I think if we, if we want to go for more reliably and rev it harder, we're going to have to put a bit more time and effort into the top end. any real speed like these seats man like there's uh, there's not overly <laughs> much support no they don't hold you in at all um, I am looking at getting some other sort of more supportive seats and then having them retrimmed in exactly the same material in this kind of yeah. granny's handbag sort of yeah material. Your, your, your nan's kitchen or her front room <laughs> yeah it's good cool, man it's good I like it keep things period correct what the fuck Shit, that really picks up. Oh mate, I wasn't expecting it. It is fairly well. I mean, there's a slight vibration. Um, all that is, is on these, they don't have a steering rack. They've got a worm box. And, what is that? Um, so essentially your steering input goes into a box, which is a hydraulic unit, sure. which then just moves some arms, which then turn the wheels. So where the downpipe sits, there's you can probably get a couple of frizzlers in there if you're lucky. <laughs> so it all does touch a bit when everything moves, but. I can't say I've noticed it, mate, if I'm being completely fair with you. No, I try and stay away from it. It's a bit horrible to... Uh, up there. to save you. a little bit of a fight, you're good. Oh, mate, awesome. So why did you go for this turbo then? Because I think the one thing that obviously the viewers will notice is that's fucking massive. Yeah, so, I mean, I could have gone for a lot smaller turbo, had a lot faster spool. Um, the downside, I suppose, with that is you're going to be pushing the turbo more top end to keep the power up. Yeah, sure. Um, and with this engine being completely stock, okay, yeah, I should have spent a load of money, forged it, you know, sorted it all out, made it bulletproof, that sort of thing. But the idea of this was to be budget. Now, it never happens, I know. <laughs> um, but I was just trawling through the internet, um, loads of people say, oh, whole set, whole set, whole set, don't get a whole set, but do get a whole set. So you've got so much mixed opinions. And I thought, you know what? Fuck it. Let's get one. Get one. They're cheap. Uh, if it breaks, they're cheap, you know, so I'll just fix it. Um, this came up, a guy had been using it on, I think it was a Ford Cosworth, uh, but he said it was too small. So, okay. They're nutters, aren't they, those Cosworth drivers? <laughs> yeah, fair yeah. enough. 
Uh, so I picked it up really cheap, that's 200 quid that had been literally used two or three times. There wasn't even any carbon in the turbine housing, so I thought, right, we're onto a winner. Result? Put it on and it worked way better than we thought, way better. Amazing. So, when does it start spooling from? Um, it starts to spool up about two and a half, three. See, that's not like, it's, no, it's not particularly that, laggy, uh, is it? Like, it's a 2.3 though. So, lot of, yes, flowing a good amount of air. But I mean, so we're at two grand now, put your foot down, you can start to hear it come up. I mean, she's, you're in the sixth. wearing. Oh, yeah, you're it's in the sixth, mate. There. Like, that's. Yeah. But then if you drop it down to four, so we're now at three and a half. Turbo straight away. weren't exactly a performance thoroughbred, were they? No, I suppose it was something that your, you know, your mum or your dad or your nanny or your granddad would have had just to tool around to the shops and, you know... Pick the kids up Yeah, school. they were designed to be taxis. I mean, this is a taxi colour, so wherever that had been a taxi, it would have been this colour, so you know, obviously <laughs> had all your taxi gimbals all around. Of course. Mate, crazy. I love it. I do really like the colour. What is this? Um, I believe... Light ivory, or yeah. as the Germans call it, Hella Elfenbein, or something like that. It's a tongue twister. <laughs> something like that. Cream. <laughs> Cream. Cream, basically. Magnolia, beige. Yeah, pretty much. I like it. Who doesn't like a beige car? When I bought it, it was so ugly. It was, <laughs> it was lovely. I loved it. it the interior, you know what I mean? Horrible old brown. Like hearing aid brown. Yeah. What possessed you as a 22 year old to go and buy this piece of shit? I don't really know. I think it's stupid anymore. You just saw it and you just thought, do you know what, I can make something really cool here. Yeah, I mean, it's grown, it's grown a lot. When I first bought it, I thought, you know, have I actually made a good decision here? Because my other car is a 1.8 engine swap Metro. Uh, cool. And 170 brake and a little bean can like that does Rapid. go quick. But this is a lot faster. Of course. Um, oh, mate, I love it. It's totally different to drive. I mean, I bought it and I just thought, why? What have I done? What have I done? But then it sort of grew on me, you know, my mate was speaking to my friend, he bought an E30 uh, Tourer and we've just been sort of going around together to shows and that and you do get a lot of, a lot of interest. Awesome. So a little bit of vibration there. Garrett, you know, 
Borg Warner Precision, I think. Actually, I might take a little bit of care for it. It's wholesome. It's wholesome. Doesn't matter. It's you know country tractor turbo. I like that. Chuck them on everything. I, don't I haven't even noticed that to be fair. Yeah, no dumbbells. All about the noise. Love it, mate. Way too many people care about like Instagram, the likes, the fame, like, and all that shit. Yeah, I mean, what like, I could have done is I could have just left a standard engine in, or put another standard engine in, chucked it on a set of wheels, put it on airbags, and called it a build. So that is it for today guys, fingers crossed you really enjoyed the video today. Thanks so much to Alex for coming out and showing us your awesome 190 sleeper. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe guys and we'll see you on the next one. Shout out to all the boys at the comments.